All right, so now I'll talk about delayed engagements as it relates to transmissions. So when you have a delayed engagement, um, delayed engagement is characterized by when you put the vehicle into gear, into drive or reverse, uh, nothing happens for like maybe five seconds, 10 seconds, or, you know, similar amount of time. And then it'll then, you know, start to move. Uh, if your delayed engagement is feels like the vehicle's locked up, like something's just preventing it from moving, as if maybe somebody stuck a wheel chalk underneath one of the wheels, uh, what is probably happening is the rear gear train is starting to break up. So here we have a uh, rear gear, a rear planetary carrier, and a sun gear out of a 4L60E. And essentially what occurs is when you put the vehicle in drive, the forward clutches engage and apply, and then power flows through that applied element, um, through the uh, forward sprag, and out through to the gear train. So what I'm going to demonstrate here is applicable to the front planetary carrier group, ring gear and sun gear, and the principles are the same. But basically, if, you know, in a normal situation, your sun gear and your planetary will rotate and mesh like so inside the ring gear as the output shaft is spinning. Now, in a delayed engagement situation, what's happening is your, your teeth are starting to break up. So they might break up with the ring gear, the planetary carriers, um, or the sun gear, or all of them. And these pieces of these, um, you know, gear teeth are interfering with the mesh. So when these are trying to mesh together, if a piece of uh, gear tooth gets lodged in here, it will seize up, right? It'll it'll essentially act as a, you know, as a, uh, I guess, a, what do you call it? It's like sticking a, a stick through the spoke of a, a running bicycle, you know, a moving bicycle wheel, and it just locks it up. So oftentimes you'll have to throw the vehicle either out of reverse or into drive or vice versa, and then the carrier will stop spinning, you know, in the opposite direction. And that will oftentimes free up that, you know, gear tooth, that piece of gear tooth that's wedging itself in between uh, the planetary gears and the ring gear or the sun gear. Um, now, in some of my teardown videos, 4L60Es, I talk about missing reverse second and fourth due to the sun shell fracturing or breaking up. And that can happen where the sun shell, uh, the splines here in the neck are stripped out or the neck separates from the body. Uh, if that happens, you're, you're gonna miss reverse, you're gonna miss second, and you're gonna miss fourth. You're not gonna have any of those gears. Uh, the same conditions can be sourced to gear train failure as well. So when it comes to preventing gear train failure, the number one way to do that is simply keep up your fluid changes. Uh, the other thing too is when you have the transmission overhauled, make sure that the shop flushes your lines in your cooler or coolers if you have an external transmission cooler because if there's a restriction in those lines, then fluid uh, lubrication fluid is not going to make it to the uh, gear train components. And, you know, if it's real bad, then you'll burn up the entire back half of the transmission, uh, grenading it completely. So what will happen there is the... Um, you know, the planet and the sun gear will weld themselves together and to the ring gear and you'll have a complete seizure. And I've seen it where I've taken, um, you know, these three parts out as, you know, they're all welded together. So you want to be mindful of that. Make sure that you uh, flush those lines, flush the cooler. And also at the same time, if the transmission is leaking, make sure that you, um, you know, you seal up the leak. Uh, whether it's a pan gasket or if you have to pull the transmission because the um, converter seal on the front's leaking out of the pump. Either way, if you lose enough fluid, it, you won't have sufficient lubrication that will cause gear train failure. And that is the, um, primarily speaking, the number one reason why um, these gears break up in an otherwise normal daily driver type application. In a race application or high performance, real high RPMs, I mean, that's a whole different animal, uh, especially with a high stall converter, more heat's generated. And if you don't have additional cooling capacity in the form of a deep pan or and or, uh, you know, the largest external cooler you can fit inside the engine bay, then you also run the risk of burning up the transmission, especially the gear train.